Arguably the most powerful forehand there has ever been belongs to Juan Martin Del Potro. Gasps from the crowd are commonplace when this man is on the court, and if you have ever seen him crush a forehand up close, you will understand why. Del Potro really maximizes his pace on the ball by making full use of his long levers. To achieve this, his contact point needs to be a good distance away from his body laterally, but also a little out in front so he can lean into the shot with his shoulders. Making sure he creates enough space to deliver this shot is not an easy task, but it sure is worth it. so well out of his backhand corner initially before he took control. Kyle Edmund generates a huge amount of power on his forehand, but most of his good work comes after the contact point. Kyle does not need a big wind-up to build momentum in this shot, as he can pick up the racket head speed so quickly just before the contact. Instead, he allows for a full release of this racket head speed after the strike through great rotation of the shoulders that let the power come through. This pace needs to be controlled, so Kyle finds extra spin and bite by finishing with his racket down low at waist height to help bring the ball up and down in time. Oh, wrecking ball on the forehand. Another player who releases after contact so well is Dominic Team, but he also really maximizes the momentum he can generate before the strike as well. Team really works from the ground up, creating a chain of kinetic energy, starting off with the big load of the legs at the same time as a good rotation of the shoulders. He then launches himself up and through, which takes him high off the ground and drives so much force through the back of the ball. All of this takes a little longer to pull together, which is why we see team favouring the slower surfaces and thriving on the clay. Oh, and there's a beauty. You can hit winners from anywhere on the court, team. A list of powerful forehands would not be complete without you guessed it, Nick Kyrgios. Of the many things Kyrgios excels at on his forehand, he really stands out for his pure racket head speed. It's his arm that does most of the work, which means it doesn't matter what sort of position he is in, he knows he can still pull that trigger. This leads to a monstrous forehand looking ridiculously casual and like there was no preparation or work at all. Wow! Kyrgios! What a stunner. Another way of being aggressive on the forehand is to play with precision. Whilst Daniel Medvedev has a deceptively powerful forehand, he really hurts you by being consistently accurate and disguising the direction of his shot, often leaving opponents stranded. There are many contributing factors to the Medvedev disguise, but a later take back on the swing can force opponents to split step late and be slow off the mark. Then you add in a much flatter strike than the norm and the ball is just past you before you know it. Medvedev plays this shot low over the net and close to the line, requiring tremendous accuracy. Oh yes, very aggressive from Medvedev, but finding a beauty down the line. One of the most precise forehands in the game belongs to Roger Federer. Whilst you could pick out any number of things that makes this forehand one of the best, it is his incredibly early contact point that gets people talking and players concerned. By contacting the ball so early, this gives Federer the room to have complete flexibility in his wrist through the strike, meaning he can manipulate the racket head in any number of ways with ease. As this only happens on contact, it creates a great disguise and plenty of winners that look like they were just a flick of the wrist. Oh, it's crushed it. This is a heck of a strike. If you don't mind taking a few risks, then you'll be keen to attack off the forehand by taking your opponent's time away. 
Stefano Sitsipas does this by ensuring his contact point is in a good position out in front, taking it early, giving him space to lean through the back of the shot. Not only does this take a step of recovery away from the opponent, this allows him the space to get full momentum with the body first, followed by the arm, and then finally snapping the hand through. This is a desirable chain reaction to have on your forehand technique as it is efficient and won't break down easily. Oh, that's huge. That's the kind of ball striking he's been treating us to this week at the O2. Denis Shapovalov is not afraid to step up the court, and by doing this so consistently, he really suffocates his opponents for time. Add in his explosivity through the shot, which creates some serious heat on the ball, and it can be tough to keep up with the Canadian youngster. But beware, by doing this, you can end up rushing yourself, and unless you have Denis's ability to get through your swing in rapid time, you'll catch yourself out. Taking quality shots so consistently on the rise is only for the bold and fully committed. It's not all about attacking when it comes to the best forehands in the world. Being able to find a way out of a tough situation over and over again means you are so tough to break down. Rafael Nadal fires off plenty of winners from seemingly impossible situations, making his opponents question whether it is worth trying to push him into that corner at all. Nadal's racket work on the ball is truly something to behold. When he is under pressure, he sends the racket up on the same side of his body rather than circling it around. This allows him to have a steeper swing which generates more spin, as well as being able to produce that unique bend on the ball down the line, keeping it out of reach of his opponents at the net. Oh, he just left the gap up the line and Nadal was ready. Novak Djokovic's incredible movement really does set him apart. This contributes to his forehand being one of the toughest shots to attack as it is so hard to get him off balance or hurt him at all. Djokovic is comfortable sliding into a shot that is still quite far away, meaning he often bamboozles opponents who are convinced he will be forced to defend. Instead, he defies what we know about the laws of tennis by being there on time, on balance and able to find the winner. Not only does he look comfortable when he should be defending, he is often ready for the next shot, not that his opponents get anywhere near it. Oh, what a point! Sensational from Novak Djokovic. That's what you call a counter-attack. <laughs> 